What happens when a horny horse girl can't score with the dude she likes? She throws a tantrum and sulks like a spoiled baby. Roll post. This is the story of how my friend's first time GMing was almost ruined by a horny horse girl, and how we somehow came out the other side the better for it. Content warning, sex, pregnancy, substance abuse, uncomfortable shades of bestiality, and glorification of SA. Also, apologies for how long this is. The backstory. I have a core group of friends who all play tabletop together. We're heavy role players, so we like to take already simple systems and tweak them to fit the setting we have in mind to allow for more roleplay. The one we use the most, and the one we used for this campaign, is a D6 system very roughly based on the burning wheel. My friend, we'll call her Game Master, has never run a game before but she is a great world builder and voice actor. She had an idea for a Song of Ice and Fire campaign set in the setting's past, for which she intricately crafted homebrew houses and adopted canon houses that existed as just names, whose fates we, the players, could decide. We loved this idea and signed right up. She gave us all sheets with the classes, backgrounds, and houses and worked with us to build characters. Our party ended up being me, a mercenary with a Red Priest background. I don't know A Song of Ice and Fire that well, so I figured having a character from ASOS was a good excuse for not knowing Westeros lore. I was going through a hard time back then, so I gave him an unnecessarily angsty, tragic backstory. I was also, in character and out of character, the only guy in the group. You all can probably see where this is going already. My longtime friend and mutual friend of the Game Master, playing a politically savvy noblewoman whose evil, abusive uncle is one of the main NPCs. Her primary motivation is to destroy him. We'll call her Padme. Then, lastly, a rough-and-tumble Iron Islander raider, who is sort of the barbarian mom of the party. Not to mention a full head taller. We'll call her Chewie. Chewie is Game Master's long-term friend, and even though she's no longer on speaking terms with Horse Girl, decided to give the game a try anyway. And now, the problem player Horse Girl, who deserves her own paragraph but does not deserve a Star Wars codename. Horse Girl was Game Master and Chewie's friend from back in high school. After high school, she dropped Chewie as a friend because, quote, I'm more mature than you, and we're in different places in our lives. AKA, Horse Girl moved out to young and ended up in financial straits, and resented her friends who did not move out because they were being fiscally responsible. She remained friends with GM, but as the campaign went on, we all realized this was more of a parasitical relationship than a friendship. She was one of those, OMG, I love D&D people who likes the idea of D&D, but has never played a serious game of it. Her former D&D tabletop experience involved her and a bunch of slapstick murder hobos bullying Strahd. Yes, they ran Curse of Strahd as a joke campaign. Needless to say, even if she wasn't a problem player, this was not a good fit. Trust me, Krabs, while this part does give a bit of gatekeepy, you're not a real fan energy, Trust me, you will wish that she was gatekept harder very soon. Roll post. Horse Girl talks GM into letting her play a bastard noble from one of the homebrew houses. This house was designed as a counterpoint to all of A Song of Ice and Fire's general awfulness. They're kind, decent people who treat women more or less fairly, and they're a northern house with a vaguely miking mead hall vibe. Horse Girl ignored all of this and decided that they were misogynistic frat bros. Their main economy is breeding warhorses, which Horse Girl latched onto. She wanted to be a skin changer, which the DM had her role for. Unfortunately for all of us, that role succeeded. She decided, of course, to be able to warg into her horse. If at any point you are looking at the title and muttering, oh no, just wait, it does get worse. 
The beginning. With session zero nailed down, we begin session one. GM sets the scene with a summit between the four main houses in the plot, who are all arguing over contested land. Me and Chewie are itching to fight for coin, and Padme is there to gain allies against her uncle. Horse Girl, as far as I know, was there to be her house's eyes and ears about the brewing conflict. The summit goes badly and ends in a declaration of war, because plot, and we are asked to choose our loyalties. While the houses are arguing, we are given the chance to wander around, party banter, talk to NPCs, and gather intel on the houses to decide which one we like the best. Immediately problems begin. Our group meets one of the recurring NPCs, a traveling merchant that we'll call the Shady Merchant, because his wares are shady AF. Horse Girl gets inexplicably obsessed with a fancy dagger he has. Padme begins playing her character as haughty and distant, and the other characters chafe against her a little bit. Out of character, we are all enjoying it, because this is roleplay and we know that we are not our characters. Horse Girl, on the other hand, loses her mind and ends up drawing a sword because she felt insulted. The Game Master manages to smooth out this kerfuffle without Horse Girl getting into serious, in-character trouble for threatening a noble. But it really sets the tone for the party interactions from then on. We choose the one Valyrian house to side with, because they have dragons and that seemed like a safe bet. We have a few traveling sessions to get to their keep. During travel, Padme really warms up. We have a nice arc about her coming out of her shell and the party begins to become friends. Horse Girl comes off as naive, sheltered, and innocent. So our characters all kind of adopt her, too. She continues to ignore Padme. The campaign setting has a lot of violence against women, so me and Chewie have our characters express concern that Horse Girl does not seem to be aware of this, and we decide to get her a weapon when we get to the keep. When we're almost there, the Game Master has our party overhear an argument between our new queen and her husband about, basically, sex and pregnancy. It's an intentionally uncomfortable scene that foreshadows plot-relevant information about the Queen's family, and it signals that all is not well in the house that we chose. At least, all the rest of us have their characters be uncomfortable. Not Horse Girl. Horse Girl decides this is an opportunity to become the Queen's best friend. She marches up and gives her what amounts to a girl power, yeah, speech. Given that Queen is furious about having another kid, this does not go well. Horse Girl refuses to leave the Queen's tent, and we have to, out of character, persuade her to leave. We get to the keep and go buy Horse Girl her dagger. My character flirts with the handsome blacksmith a bit, which seems to fly right over Horse Girl's head, and we give her the dagger. And she gleefully names it the Rape Dagger. We thought this was a joke in the moment. It was not a joke. She proceeds to call it the Rape Dagger from then on. Remember the Shady Merchant? She tried to buy his dagger every time we encountered him and pouted when she didn't have enough money. She really wanted to dual wield badass daggers, I guess. The next weird thing happens when we meet the Queen's family. Queen has several young children. Horse Girl refuses to talk to any of the important NPCs, like the courtiers, advisors, knights, etc., and only wants to talk to the little kids. She insists on doing a whole circus show with her horse for the bairns. GM is incredibly confused, but makes her roll for it. She succeeds and proceeds to narrate out her circus performance in elaborate detail. The whole party is left to wonder what the fuck just happened. Little did we know, this would be foreshadowing. While at the keep, Padme ends up having an arc where she falls in love with one of the house's knights. They become engaged, which conveniently aligns with Padme's personal and political ambitions. We get our first mission as mercenaries and diplomats, go down to Dorne and recruit the mercenary company that my character belongs to. 
It's a long trip, so we're going to have lots of travel and random encounter sessions. We pack up and head out. This is where those red flags begin to become a red sea. Trouble brewing. It starts with the skin changing, because of course it does. Every night, GM has me roll for my red priest to get a prophecy or not, and for horse girl to see if she had a good night's sleep or warged into her horse. Horse girl becomes obsessed with her horse dreams. She asks damn near everyone she meets about them, and she pesters the house master about them. She complains dramatically about them at our roadside camp sessions. The horse dreams turn from a clue that she should seek out a skin changer teacher to a defining personality trait that she does not want to move on from. She starts treating her horse like royalty and insisting everyone else do the same. It's annoying, but whatever. Then we get to combat encounters, and oh boy. As mentioned, Horse Girl previously played her character as sheltered and naive. She soaked up our mercs talking about war with wide-eyed innocence. So it came as a shock to everyone when, during combat, she turned into a violent psychopath. She would slaughter bandits when they were down and laugh like a loon. She tried to intimidate enemies by staring them down and growling threats that felt like anime one-liners. And she genuinely thought it would work. At one point, I'm pretty sure she insisted that we shoot a fleeing bandit. It was a bizarre tone shift. At one point, my character got philosophical about how these were real people with their own thoughts and dreams, etc. And she was having none of it. This is where my player's dumb, edgy backstory comes into play. Among other points, this poor guy was addicted to the milk of the poppy, fantasy opium. Because I enjoyed the idea of a drug-addled seer. I had been tracking it on a calendar so I could roleplay his withdrawal symptoms. And they got bad at this point. Horse Girl, for some reason, latched onto him and tried to smother him with affection. She didn't seem to care about why he was sick, but she clearly believed she could fix him with the power of friendship. At the same time, she ignored every other member of the party, refusing to give them the most basic time of day. This behavior repeated itself when we met any male NPC who had even the slightest whiff of a tragic backstory. She particularly latched onto bastard sons. Every time we met a bastard son, she would pester them for their family story, wax poetic about how, quote, us bastards have to stick together, and act like they had a close sibling relationship when they didn't even know each other. It was especially bad if the NPC did not actually have a tragic backstory. She would insist that they did and kept pressing them while they, and the GM, baffledly reiterated that their home life was fine. But an NPC did not need a tragic backstory to earn her smothering affection. No, one recurring NPC in the game is a bard who is, not so secretly, an info broker. He exists for the sole purpose of spreading rumors and being fun. He's also a pickup artist. Horse Girl took one look at this man and decided she had to have him. He was her knight in shining armor, her beacon. The man she was destined to love. Everyone else thought he was sort of shifty and took a disliking to him. This will be relevant later. The beginning of the end. We finally get to Dorne and all of these plots come to a head. My character finally loses his cool and gets thrown into medieval fantasy rehab by his friends and family. Padme's character reveals that she's pregnant. Chewie lives it up as the party's designated Kirk and finds herself a man of the week. A friend of GM's, we will call her Lando because she came in late and was in the game a tragically short time. She decides that she wants to join in, so we introduce her as the bastard child of one of the noble-born mercenaries. We meet the mercenary NPCs who are a rowdy, fun, foul-mouthed, melodramatic bunch, and we start picking ones to join our war campaign. Horse Girl is having none of this. She takes offense to everyone in the party, one by one. First is my character. 
Up until now, he was basically the only person she wanted to talk to, to the point where she ignored the rest of the party and monopolized all of my time. It was frustrating because I wanted to interact with everyone else, but I wasn't really allowed to. She smothered him with unwanted, overbearing affection, while also talking down to him and being very judgmental. She insisted on, quote, mothering him when he was four years her senior, when he calmly told her that he didn't want her help and that she didn't even seem to care what he was dealing with, she lost her mind. Her character had a meltdown, yelling about how she didn't want him to die, how he was selfish, how he was rejecting her glorious friendship, etc. It shocked him in character and everyone at the table out of character. Eventually, her character left to go brood dramatically. She had begun to play her character as an alcoholic, and the binge drinking and brooding cycle was becoming normal for her character. I explained to her that being around her character's equally volatile substance abuse was damaging to my character, and that they were never going to be friends because of that. But that out of character we were still cool. Her reaction was basically, huh? What alcohol abuse? The entire thing was triggering for people in the group who had dealt with substance abuse in real life, and we started chatting out of character a lot about how uncomfortable we were. The Game Master confirmed that this is how she drinks in real life. Quick TLDR on this one, what was supposed to be an uplifting arc for my character of recovery among his friends, turned into a triggering out-of-character disaster. Up until recently, she actually seemed very nice, if just a little overbearing and cringy. Then she quickly started acting like that one girl in school who treats the disabled kid like her pet and babies them in a weirdly ableist way. And now that she didn't get her way, she is going to make a huge spoiled baby stink about it. An attempt to make others feel bad for not going along with whatever she wants. It doesn't look that bad just yet, but you'll see very soon how this develops. It's awful. Roll post. Then came Padme's turn. During a session that Horse Girl couldn't make, and during which she was brooding in character, Padme revealed to the party that she was pregnant. Everyone in the party loved Padme. She had this lovely character arc from brittle politician to a warm and friendly head of her soon-to-be household, and a pretty damn good spymaster. This was the beginning of her character's slow send-off, and we all had a fun time congratulating her. Horse Girl, on the other hand, had spent the whole game ignoring and making it clear that she did not like Padme. Despite this, when she came back next session, she lost her mind. Again, because Padme did not treat her as an instant best friend. She yelled at her in character for not telling her before everyone else, and acted hurt that her quote-unquote friend hadn't told her something she the player, was not even there for. Chewie, miraculously, avoided catching Horse Girl's wrath directly, but I suspect this third meltdown was indirectly directed at her. Chewie's character is a Kirk. She has a guy in half the places our party visits, and she is very casual about hookups. She easily befriended the mercenaries and shacked up with one for the duration of their trip. Horse Girl, apparently, was jealous or something. She more or less bullies the GM into making the info broker, the pickup artist bard from previous sessions, be at the inn they're staying at. She then has her character hook up with info broker. She acts from then on as if info broker is her boyfriend. It got to the point where GM planned to have info broker show up at the next tavern with a woman draped on each arm just to get it into her head that Info Broker did not care about her. And then, poor Lando. Lando just wanted to join our game and have fun. Instead, she got the same treatment Horse Girl gives all the women in the group. Being ignored, having her conversations interrupted and monopolized, and general passive aggressiveness. 
Lando did her own write-up for this, and the principal takeaways were, Horse Girl did not like that Lando was a bastard with a happy home life who was not going to give her the I'm a bastard pity party, and Horse Girl was jealous, out of character, that Lando joined late and was better friends with the Game Master than she was. Lando never really got to become close to the group, and it spoiled her fun in the game. And then came the session that broke us. The end. The party was finally heading back to the keep to report on their mission success. Two very uncomfortable things then happen. Uncomfortable thing number one. My character is talking to one of the other PCs about whether it's ethical to pursue aforementioned handsome blacksmith. Given that the campaign setting is not a setting where gay people are accepted, my character is a trained fighter, but Blacksmith is not, and he's concerned for his safety. Horse Girl finally catches on that he likes men. She goes on a whole rant about how you, quote, You shouldn't be afraid to express yourself, and it gets better. Like there won't be real consequences for Blacksmith if he's outed. It was basically the gender-flipped version of her girl power speech to the Queen. Thing number two. The mercenary NPCs and our PCs started going back and forth with body jokes and general silliness to pass time on the road. Horse Girl decides that she's gonna join in on this one. She starts making sex jokes about her horse. As we're all processing this, she keeps going, getting on a tangent about how her horse is gonna get worked up, run off, and impregnate some mare. She then goes on another tangent about how they'd have to take the resulting cult with them. The table then goes silent. She insists that it's not a joke. Padme awkwardly tries to tell her that that would be theft. Pretty sure we ended the session after that. Somehow, yes. This was the straw that broke us. The GM had been quietly attempting to get her to act together this whole time, each time getting her to half-heartedly promise to fix her character's behavior. We put together a group letter of our concerns and presented it to her, hoping that she would listen to us. She did not. She went MIA for a few days, after which she posted a long post in our group. It was about how she was leaving for mental health reasons, keeping in mind this entire time, the GM had tried to persuade her to go see a therapist, only to be told that she didn't need one. She never addressed anything in our letter or that we had talked about during sessions. She just left. During the post-rage quit analysis, we couldn't figure out if she had been obsessed with my character because she wanted to date him or be in some weird surrogate family friendship with him. To this day, we aren't sure. We are sure, however, that for whatever reason, she hated and was jealous of every woman in the game, both in character, as characters, and out of character as players. Horse Girl's fixation on my character sent my planned arc and characterization for him to go so far off the rails that I had to send him to the front lines and replace him with a new character while I redo his entire sheet. That said, our party managed to stick together and continue the game, which is still going strong after two years. Instead of a soap opera, it has become the political drama that we wanted it to be. Horrifying Addendum After this was over, the GM dug out Horse Girl's old play-by-post roleplay, fanfiction, and original fiction. When left to her own devices, she apparently does all of this but way, way worse. Everyone has horribly traumatizing backstories, she turns all the women in her stories into villains, she whoopifies all men, but the worst part, her original fiction turned out to be rape fantasy erotica. Suspicions of creepiness confirmed. We realized we dodged a real bullet when she dropped out. The GM has not spoken to or interacted with the horse girl in any way since she left, and her life is infinitely better for it. And thus ends the tale of a whiny horse girl who sulked and complained the second anything didn't go exactly her way. The takeaway here? I suppose it's just to not feed into it. Be petty. These people thrive on drama and attention, and if you feed it, they will get worse. 
So starve them. Don't apologize or backpedal or appease when they act like babies, especially when they refuse to communicate like a normal adult. More often than not, these people realize they can't feed off of your good vibes and show themselves out. Anyways, check out more tales of D&D &D gone bad in these funny boxes. Till next time.